Welcome back nail queens. In today's video, I'm going to be dipping on my nails. I'm going to be showing you how to dip in these Mylar-like flake glitter nails. Soul Dip sent me six of their new dip powders from the Mama collection, which is available right now on the website. If you want to go shop, I'll have a discount code and the link in the description box below so you can shop and save some money. So here are the six colors that I got from the Mama collection. So I decided to pull out Devoted, but I'll pop in a photo here of inspiring as well. I put my nail tips on, they're already glued on and everything, and I pulled out Devoted. While it looks kind of crystal clear on my nails when I apply it, it does have a light purple tint to it, making it absolutely, absolutely stunning. Yes, I just called purple stunning. I just don't like the darker, darker purples, but this, this one... It gets a pass, it gets a pass. Anyways, I'm using my dip liquids and applying it over top of this full coverage tip. If you don't already know, you can dip over top of full coverage tips and you can apply your full coverage tips with glue. You don't have to use gel to apply them. I use the Dashing Diva nail glue to apply these tips to my nails and there's several websites that sell it right now. Sally Beauty, um, I think it's MK Beauty Supply or something like that, and Amazon have Dashing Diva's Fastball nail glue available if you want an air dry glue and you don't want to deal with gel. Anyways, I dip my nail in the powder. I got a comment on one of my recent videos that I'm dipping my nails incorrectly. There's more than one way to do like everything in life. So uh, you don't have to dip your nails at that common 45 degree angle that many of us were taught when we first started dipping years ago. Sometimes that just gives you too many lumps and bumps. I prefer to lay my nail flat on top of the powder. Sometimes if it's like not a chunky glitter, if it's more like a solid or a shimmer, I might dip inside the powder, who knows? But for the most part, I tend to lay my nail flat on top of the powder. This little stick right here is what I use to run around my cuticle line just to remove any dip powder that may have accidentally gotten in contact with my skin, and it also helps move around glitter pieces. And that cuticle stick is available at Soul Dips as well, so I'll make sure to link that in the description box. What I like about that one over other ones that I have is it's not as sharp, which means you're not going to stabby stab yourself with it. Um, I mean, you could if you applied enough pressure, but you shouldn't be, but some of the other ones that I have are a lot pointier and sharper, which can be a dangerous thing when you're working with nails. So I'm almost finishing up with my first layer of this Mylar-like glitter on all my nails. And as you can tell, the first layer is pretty sparse for some reason, and I know exactly why. It's the AC, literally as I'm doing this voiceover, is blowing so hard in my room, but I can't control it because everyone else on the top floor in our house wants a really cold house. So I'm just gonna have to live with that. So that AC being so close to me while I'm doing my nails greatly affects how quickly my base bond dries. And I hate that. And somehow that got hard. No, no. Um, I'll fix it. I'll get another bottle out. But um, that cold air really affects how quickly my base bond dries. So that first layer dried so incredibly quick and two of the nails, you can tell there was like hardly anything on it. So that's why I'm going and adding like another layer of base bond and dipping in those because there was like nothing on those. And that happens. Like we don't always have a perfect dipping experience. Even I've been doing this since 2017 and I still don't have perfect dipping experiences every single time. Sometimes they go great. Other times they're so awful. I don't even show you all the process. I just chuck the whole mani out the window. Not literally out the window, but you get what I mean.
All right, so I'm gonna dust all that off now and I'm gonna go in with my third layer. So this is the layer where you kinda wanna be a little bit more meticulous about your application, kinda making sure nothing is really sticking up when you're doing your third coat. When you're doing the first and second coat, if things stick up, it happens, it's what it is. Um, right now you can notice as like I'm applying the dip and then I might use my glove to press things down a little bit around the edges if I notice anything sticking up. And the reason for being more t meticulous about that is because we're going to go in with a layer of clear dip powder over top of this glitter. And I want to make my life a lot easier by not having to encapsulate or file through glitter pieces that are sticking up because that can make the process more just annoying and you don't want to lose pretty pieces of glitter now, do you? Anyways, I don't want to sacrifice the glitter. Glitter is precious. It's precious. It's a precious ingredient in this household. So yeah, I'm just using my glove a little bit just to patty pat it all down so it's nice and smooth. That way my clear dip powder will go on nice and smooth as well in only just one coat. Sometimes if you're working with really, really, really chunky glitters, you might have to apply a couple coats of clear for it to completely smoothly coat the entire like application of glitter. I don't like doing that. I want to have as few coats as possible. So in this application, I've already done three layers of dip powder. I'm about to put a clear and you can imagine that if you are working with thicker liquids, your nails are going to look pretty thick. So the type of liquid you're working with greatly affect how thick or thin your nails will look. All right, this part is pretty important when you're working with mylar kind of glitters and chunky glitters is to, before you activate your nails, just file the underside of the nail because sometimes the dip powder kind of droops. It hangs down under the sides. I just don't ask. It just does. It happens. It has a mind of its own. Um, that's how gravity works. And so I like to file the undersides just so that it's softer, you know, it's softer to file. All right, so I'm going to go in with my layer of clear. This is like a jar of clear that I have that's literally been contaminated by glitter. So it's my glitter clear. That's why it has glitter in it. Um, I'm applying dip base to the entire nail and then I'm going to dip in the clear. And this is why it was also very important to file the under edges and sides a little bit. If your nails look a little off, like the shape isn't like how you like it before you put on your clear, definitely fix your shape before you put on your clear. It's going to help when you're dealing with your filing and buffing later after you activate. You want to file that when it's soft, the problem areas, so that when it's activated and cured and hardened, you have an easier time getting that shape nice and perfect. I finished applying the layers of clear and now I'm going to activate the nails. Um, I dusted them off too, so yeah, you want to dust off before you activate. But I activate all of them. I'm very liberal about my activator because I want it to really cure that. And then after I activate, and then I'm going to take my hand file again and basically do kind of what I was doing the first time with the hand file, but this time it's going to be more about perfecting the shape. Uh, making sure it's nice and almond, which I'm wearing the short almond tips from Soul Dips. They have extra short almonds. I haven't tried those yet. Um, they have quite a few styles. I've used these, I think it's the round, the coffin, and the short almond. So there's definitely some others that I want to try, but I haven't been able to try those yet because I have to order them. And I have a bunch of stuff from Soul Dips coming in the mail too, plus some new gels from her. Well, they're not new. They've been around for a while. So now I want to pull out my dust collector because I'm going to do some filing. So this Mylar Flake situation, if I used a hand buffer or a hand file, it's going to take a minute. 
So I'm going to pull out my dust collector from Melody Susie. You can get this on the Amazon. I'll link that down below as well. And I have my E file here. This little thing is gorgeous. I love it. And I'm going to use this. I'm not sure if it's fine or medium grit bit from Kiara Sky. I'm going to use this basically to debulk and kind of shape the nails. I like the dome bit top of it. It's basically like a safety bit. So um, unlike some other bits that I have from Kiara Sky, this one, if the top touches my skin, it literally won't nick me because there's no like drill bit right there going. There's nothing etching into my skin. So I love this one. So if you're someone who's afraid to start using e-files, definitely consider getting those dome type bits where there's nothing at the top. So you can graze your skin. If you graze your skin on accident, you won't hurt yourself. By the way, I'm not literally going this fast. I sped this up because if not, we would have been here for like five minutes while I did this process. So I am not this fast at e-filing, nor do you want to go this fast when you're e-filing. And if you're e-filing and you're new to it, you basically want to basically graze the surface of the powder that you're working on. You don't want to apply pressure because that can cause heat spikes and heat spikes hurt. All right, so I'm dusting off the powder. The uh, dust collector collected a lot of dust, but there's always like remnants hanging around my hand. Um, I should really use this dust collector more because I've been vacuuming my desk area more frequently and my goodness, we have a lot of dust from doing dip powder nails. So now that all that's like basically smooth for the most part, I wanna take this buffing block and literally smooth out the surface of the nails. So I debulked with the e-file, made sure that my cuticle area was nicely shaped, the sidewalls were nicely shaped, make sure everything's for the most part smooth, but the buffing block is really going to do the best work. It's like when you're doing woodworking and you have to sand stuff down, you're gonna use a, um, a larger heavier grit to basically do the most of the work but when you're trying to get that smooth polished look you're going to use a finer grit to make everything look smoother and more finer so it's basically just like doing nails um, I want to show you guys how much dust collected in this dust collector as well. So I like this. You can, after you turn it off, I turned it off. Um, I didn't wait till it stopped spinning to pull it out. So I'm sorry, but don't do this. But you just pull up the tab and it's going to come off in the lid. And then you're going to have the filter right under the lid, right? I'm going to dust off that little bit of dust right there. So I'm going to pull out the filter and yeah, it's still spinning. Don't touch that. Do not touch it while it's still spinning, guys. And look how much of the chunks of dip powder got in that. So I tend to like clean out my dust collector filter every single time I use it. So I will literally hit this against the inside of my trash can to get any excess dust out. I'm taking rubbing alcohol and a lint-free wipe and I'm like wiping my nails to remove any excess dust that may still be on my nails that my dusting brush, my stiff dusting brush couldn't get off. And I know somebody's going to ask me, so I'm just going to say it now. Somebody's probably going to ask, do you need an e-file to do this? No, you don't. But it sure help makes things a hell of a lot easier. Anyways, I'm going to add activator to these nails. And then after the activator, like, basically air dries, I'm taking another lint-free wipe and rubbing alcohol and removing any excess activator that didn't absorb into the dip powder because only so much can absorb in there, you know? It's like a sponge. You can't keep taking in more water. Um, and then I'm going to rub off the excess activator that didn't get absorbed and then I can go into my top coat routine. So I'm going to use my dip powder top coat here today. I normally tend to reach for a gel top coat just because you just apply it once and then pop it in your nail lamp. But I'm going for that air dry fully dip powder thing like 100%. No gel was used in this mani at all. So what I do is I apply one coat of the dip liquid like the dip top coat and let that air dry for like 15, 20 seconds. And then I apply my second coat and let that air dry for like a minute or two. And bada bing, bada boom, I have glossy nails. Also, please disregard my thumb. I just don't. wear gloves when you're working with gel. Just saying, just saying, don't, don't be like me. Get up and get your gloves. So that's what happened to my thumb. It was like some contact dermatitis. I know it looks gross, whatever. But the rest of my nails are looking great. I'm excited for this mani. It's like glass. It's like glass. I don't know. Not everyone likes that glass see-through look. And maybe if you have longer nails and you're using tips, you might not like this look. But if you have completely long nails and you dip over the long nails with no extensions and you can't see through it, I would totally love to see how that looks on somebody. So if you buy this color and you like completely dip over just your natural nail, no extensions, no see-through like I have here, 
uh, tag me, let me know, send me the photo. I would love to see what this looks like over just a dip nail. No, no, no free edge, no clear nail extension. So I'm going to let that fully dry. I should have applied cuticle oil and I'm going to show you guys a photo here. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. I'll try to answer your questions. If I can't answer it here today and it's a process I have to show you, I'll probably make a video on it very soon. Thank you guys. Bye.